All right. Here we are. <laughs> we got we got Stephen Hollifield and he is bright and early with the wave. Hey Stephen. I remember he said he was coming uh, coming with questions. Yes, yes. Great. That's what we want. I'm trying to make us look cool over here. There we go. <laughs> so, Candy, today we got an awesome episode, right? And we get to choose some winners from last week. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, we're going to give it a few minutes here. I'm going to let Candy give, talk a little bit. Okay, well, I'm going to have to apologize for the cat's tail in the way because he's just insistent that he's going to join the show today. <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone. I know Delilah, Delilah is getting us set up with all of the social media shares and whatnot. So welcome to our uh, marketing coffee episode of, uh, um, and we're going, this is our Q&A version, which means that uh, we're going to talk, take your questions. And if you have questions that you want to give us live, we'll be glad to talk to you about them and bring you on live. And if not, we do have some questions that we've received um, uh, separately that we'll uh, we'll be happy to address some um, without you live <laughs> and you'll have to watch <laughs> right um so yeah you guys i am working on getting this shared out so we can get more people so as last week it was um we will be doing another contest so if you share this video sharing is caring right <laughs> share this video you will be entered in to win an Amazon gift card and a copy of Candy's book, one of her books. One of my books. One of her books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, last week we had some we had several people, so all of their names are here on the board. Drum roll, drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are excited to win, can you give us some hearts and some likes and uh, let us know if you are one of those people. In fact, I believe it's, it was, I have Peter Weller, Leon Joseph, Angel Flores, Jim Vogel, Stephen Hollifield, all on my board. Yeah, and then on top of that, since I had the, I had the right amount of people, you guys have it off there. You have two places on my board. All right, two chances to win. All right. <laughs> So yeah, um, um, here you go, Candy. I'm gonna give you this one. Okay, okay. That's, that's cool. <laughs> ah, there we go. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, smart author series is what we are doing now, and like she said today, we're doing the got questions, viewer and questions and answers. If you guys would like to come on live with us, you will need to be on a PC with a good camera and nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I will send you the link so that you can join us live today on the show. Because today we are supporting our authors. Yes, we are. Definitely. All right. So now I'm going to put this one down. I'm also going to remind everybody to get connected with us. Oh, wait, is the other way? On that YouTube. <laughs> right there youtube.marketingandcoffee.com will take you directly to our videos um you, if you missed last week's episode it was a really good one learn we taught you guys a lot of great information about book project management so you guys i would recommend you go and catch that one <laughs> um, we have great questions today too so i'm looking forward to this yes 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 we do um last thing here is for all of those i have opened up the floodgates again for author interviews so go to my website smartmarketingforauthors.com click on marketing and coffee and apply for an interview um i'm looking to fill my calendar for the rest of the month i believe i'm halfway there already so hurry up and get on it get on it all right, Candy. Okay, are we going to do the spin first or are we going to uh, jump into questions? I think we should do, what do you think? Should we wait until the end or should we do it now? 
What do you guys want us to do? You want us to do the spin now or do it later? Hmm. <laughs> Pretty quiet out there. I know it is, right? It's a it's a quiet afternoon. Well, let's wait a little bit then. We'll take a break and and uh, from when we have questions, we'll take a break and, and go from there. Yeah, let's wait a little bit. I think that'll be best because it'd be more funner if more people are on here. So that's why it's important. You need to share the broadcast. Let's get more people onto the show so we can find out who won. That's right. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. We've got to vote for spin. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we got to vote to spin. <laughs> Stephen wants to know if he won now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I want to win now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know he he turned he came on early. So Stephen, uh, you are on here, and anybody else who is watching, make sure you go to. Um, or you guys can list your questions below. He's like, I'm curious. <laughs> you can list your questions below today and ask away. We are here to support you. But with that being said, do you want to go in and start with our first question? Sure. Why don't we? This is it's a big one. If it's the one I think we're going to start with. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I believe it is the one we're going to start with. <laughs> so I'm going to pop it up here on the screen. And these were submitted on our website. We have a few to go over. But yeah, Candy, take it away because this one is your area. The, uh, yes, and it is. It truly is a big, uh, a big important topic that we will absolutely be covering again. Uh, but let's get a, a good take on it today. Amazon. Here's the question. Amazon is telling me to move my book from Create Space to Kindle. What do I do? Okay. And the answer is, you have to do that. <laughs> Uh, there's quite a bit, it's quite a bit more involved in that. Amazon, uh, of course, CreateSpace is essentially Amazon's printer, print-on-demand printer. And Kindle, Kindle Direct, is Amazon's ebook printer. Okay, that's essentially, and they've had, they've been, uh, up until earlier this year, they were essentially two separate divisions. And Amazon has gradually, over the last now uh, year and a half to two years, been consolidating the the works of both the printed and the ebook divisions for their for their um, books and it's not necessarily been popular for everyone those of us who those who started with create space which is a little bit more of a, 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 a has a little bit more it looks a little bit more like a traditional printer and publisher than than Kindle does Okay, then Kindle Direct does. However, you can, they, this, not too long ago, uh, earlier this year, Kindle started offering print books as well. And earlier this year, CreateSpace closed down their editing services. So the writing was on the wall. Those of us who have books on either on Amazon and are publishing through the Amazon printing services have known this was coming. You are going to find that if you have a book that is out through create space if you have one book or multiple books you the author the person who is in charge of that book is going to receive an email from create space alerting you that you will have to be moving your book from create space to kindle now it's a semi-automatic process okay and i'm going to go a little bit into the process in a little bit here i just give you an idea of, of what to expect so it's not a big deal as far as um, getting it done. It shouldn't be. Let's put it that way. What I think could be a challenge is getting support, technical support. So if you're someone who's not really very comfortable with doing online work, you might want to have someone in your back pocket to help you out when you get ready to do this. Okay. And don't panic. Uh, it's not going to be something you're not going to lose your book. Okay, it, it's 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 simply going to be moved over so that when books are when new books are produced are printed, they're going to come from the KDP printers instead of the Create Space printers because they are actually changing printers in some cases. Okay, in fact, some of the printed some of the books, some some books, and I can't say which ones will it will be that way are actually may actually be printed in Europe instead of America. So I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I I do know I've read that that that's a possibility. 
Um, let's talk just briefly about what the differences are between, what the main differences are between uh, Create Space and Kindle. Okay. Um, and uh, the one difference that I think is going to be the most significant is that Create Space pays royalties every 30 days once you meet the, 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 the level uh, where, they, where the payout is there. Kindle pays every 60 days, and that's not going to change. So if you're used to having a royalty payment coming in every 30 days, it's not going to happen. You're going to get it every 60 days. Uh, now, uh, and if you, now that said, if you have a royalty coming in every month, you probably won't see any difference. But if it takes you a month to earn, to get up to the level where your royalties are coming in, you will see a difference. It's going to take longer to receive those royalties because you aren't going to get them until, until uh, 60 days later. Okay. Uh, I don't believe there's anything you can do about that. Uh, you know, there are, there is plenty of information about how that's a set, how that is set up. One of the things that you want to do is to check and make sure uh, that your tax information is current and up to date in your CreateSpace account. Because when the books are automatically moved over into Kindle, they, that Kindle will take that information from CreateSpace. So make sure that your tax information is up to date. That's something you could do right now. You don't have to wait until you get the email. You can do some prep work to get ready. I touched on one of the other changes, the differences between them, and that's printing costs. Uh, you may be told, I have, I have been told, and also one of my clients has been told, that their pricing may change the printing costs. And it looks like if you may be told, I have been told, and also one of my clients. Are we getting an echo? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> and then another change will be uh, with the cover. Apparently, this was a, this was a surprise to me. I didn't didn't know this one until I uh, un, until I uh, did some research. <clears throat> Apparently, if you have a cover that you've created using Create Space is Create Space's cover specifications, which of course you had to do if you were printing a book on through Create Space, you are going to have to remake that cover using the KDP cover specifications. Again, that's something that you can do ahead of time. You can go ahead and get that cover reproduced ahead of time and get that done. And uh, the, the cover creator is on KDP's uh, website, so you can go there and get that started. In most cases, you probably already have a KDP account. If you haven't already set up your KDP account, Go into your Create Space account and create it from there because it will bring over some of the information. You won't have to do all of it twice. You will still have to do your tax information twice. It's not going to, if you create the KDP account now, brand new, you would still have to do the tax information directly. It's only if you are moving from a book from Create Space to KDP that you don't have to duplicate the tax information. Okay. Um, there are some other minor revisions. The, the way you review a file, minor differences rather, the way you review a file is a little bit different on Kindle than it is on, on CreateSpace. As with CreateSpace, Kindle is now going to make it a possibility to have, to actually border, to order in the mail a print review uh, so that you can actually look at your book uh, at ahead of time in print if you want it, and it is still optional. The, they, they do expect that the majority of their books will be um, edited, to be reviewed digitally. <clears throat> there are other changes as well, and um, some of them are possibly uh, in a good thing, okay? For instance, uh, you do have some changes to the advertising that's available to you. KDP has expanded advertising options. Um, you know, your book will... Um, Remain live, and this is another change that you should be aware of. On KDP, on CreateSpace, if you make changes to your book, the book comes down temporarily. Not so. With KDP, your book, once it goes live, it stays live. And if you make changes to it, it stays live, and once you make the changes, then it will, then it will process, gradually process those changes into the new books. 
but uh, that's something to keep in mind that your book will always be live on uh, KDP. <clears throat> I'm not sure what uh, exactly how that's going to work. I just know that that's one of the features. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, there are a few other things that I, I think are not really critical. Let's talk a little bit about um, what you can do before you move. Now, I've already touched on this, okay? First of all, make sure that you, if, if, if you want to go into KDP, make sure that your books are available on Amazon, okay? And that means you have to enable the expanded distribution um, and, and to, um, to order author copies on KDP. So you do have to make sure that that's put in place. So make sure that your books are available uh, through Amazon using the expanded distribution. And on, on CreateSpace, that's been an option, and that will not be an option with KDP. You must have the expanded distribution enabled, as I understand it. Okay. I said to check your payment information. I said to make changes to your cover creator, your cover. That's going to be necessary. Um, if you have any books that are not yet set up, if they are awaiting proof or in proof review, okay, get us get that done. Go ahead and get that taken care of now through CreateSpace, and that way you won't have to do it through Kindle. You can just get it finished up through CreateSpace, okay. Um, and if there are files that you have to keep reports, your accounting, <clears throat> sorry. The CreateSpace and KDP have different ways of accounting for your, your book sales. It's all going to move into the Kindle, the KDP, which actually is better than CreateSpace anyway. Okay, so keep that in mind. What, what you can keep track of in KDP is actually stronger than what you can keep track of currently in CreateSpace. So that's one of the things that I believe is going to be beneficial. But make sure you get that information for your historical information for your sales anything that you want, go ahead and grab that out ahead of time, okay? So those are some of the things you can do right now. And there's one more thing you can do right now, and that is don't panic, <laughs> okay? This is being, it's a big change. It's being rolled out. It's being rolled out gradually. And if you don't, if you haven't received that email yet, you probably don't have to be concerned about it, but get ready because it's definitely coming, okay? And they will make that, at some point, they're going to move everything over anyway. So the more you do to be ready for it ahead of time, the less stressful and the more successful that rollover will be for you. I see Stephen has a question. I'm going to stop talking for a second. <laughs> I'm about to say <laughs> Okay, Stephen says he has a KDP account. And can you publish on every platform? Um, yes, you can. You still have that option in KDP to go with, um, uh, I think it's KDP. Oh, I can't remember exactly what it is, Stephen. I'm going to mess it up if I try and give you the words. But yes, you still will be able to publish on all of your platforms. You have to accept the expanded distribution for Amazon, but that doesn't mean that you have to go uh, KDP exclusive. Okay. Uh, you just simply have to accept the expanded distribution. The um, And you'll have to look specifically at what they're offering uh, as far as the rules go when you make that conversion. Okay. Um, that one is one that it will, it will depend on your book and how you've got your distribution options set up, period. It's the But what they're telling us is that you must do the expanded distribution, uh, which which simply means that you put your book on Amazon. That's really what that means. It doesn't mean that you can't put it anyplace else. In KDP, you have the choice to, to go exclusively with KDP, okay, with Amazon essentially, or to include other, other authors, other distribution sources as well. That still is an option. You simply have to use the expanded. Okay. Um, CreateSpace will no longer be, uh, in your question list, Stephen, I noticed you asked about CreateSpace. CreateSpace will no longer be an option because CreateSpace is going to be shut down. CreateSpace is a, is, a, is a printing platform, not a distribution platform. And actually, so are the other ones you talked about. Lulu is a printing platform, and so is Booksy. Uh, I took the question down too soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great question. Thank you, Stephen. So, yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have any questions on this, um, Delilah? Uh, I think oh, I didn't, I didn't I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that that CreateSpace and Kindle uh, both um, have some really great resources. So, and they've given you, when you get that email, they'll give you a, a, a link to go to it. But if you simply Google, um, you know, and create space and, K, and KDP merge, you're going to find a lot of people talking about it. And so far, all of what I've seen seems to be good as far as the advice goes. I don't see anybody who's, who's looking, who's giving you know, advice that isn't, isn't, doesn't seem valid. Um, I'm seeing a couple of people beginning to offer some courses, you know, uh, you know how to do this. Honestly, I don't think you need a course in it, but if, if you want, uh, you know, you may want to do that if you're not very comfortable with, uh, with, with platforms. I do suggest that if you are not a computer person, if you, if you have not been managing your CreateSpace account yourself, if someone has been doing that for you or if someone set it up for you and you've just ignored it ever since, get some help. Okay. Uh, bring in someone like myself who works with CreateSpace and KDP. Um, find someone, another author who can help you through it, who's gone through it. Um, you know, but do get some help on that. It's not going to be difficult, but if it get, if you get into trouble, KDP does not have a strong history of being great on customer support. <laughs> One of the reasons we stayed with CreateSpace is because CreateSpace really does have a great, has had a great customer support service in general. Uh, KDP's has been a little bit wonky, uh, and I'm hoping it's going to improve. I'm hoping they're taking all those great create create space reps and moving them into Kindle. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> I haven't seen that. That's pure speculation on my part. Okay, and I and she's gone again. Um, let me see. <clears throat> I've talked about the differences. Um, yeah, I think we've really covered it. Uh, I'm not sure. Does Stephen, Stephen, how can you really make an impact with a proposal to a publisher? Oh, Stephen's got a different question. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to shut up and send that to you. <laughs> oh, you're going to give this one to me? <laughs> Why don't you start on it so I can have a drink? <laughs> All right. So how can you really make an impact with a proposal to a publisher without an agent? Hmm. So I believe in thinking outside the box for anything that I'm doing. Because you got to think about how many books a publisher, or, well, depending on how popular a publisher is, because there's so many, there's indie publishers and all kinds of different publishers nowadays, you know. But if you're trying to go to traditional publishing route and you're trying to get your eyes in front of a publisher or get your book in front of a publisher, get eyes on you from a publisher, so many ways you can word that. <laughs> I would suggest that you think outside the box. Well, in sales prospecting, okay? So let's say you have about five or six, I wouldn't go with just one publisher. I would try to hit up at least five to six publishers, maybe more um, in my publisher prospecting from a sales perfect perspective, okay? Once you do that, you want to tier those publishers based on how great they are. So tier A, right, would be your, your best awesome publisher, right? This is the, the best possibility. This is the one you want, so on and so forth. So your strategy for a tier A publisher, right, when you're prospecting them, is going to be different from a tier C. So tier A, think you know, um, outside the box. I'm going to send them a fruit basket. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go on LinkedIn and research their whole company background. I'm going to find the, the main leaders on their organizational chart. I'm going to contact those people and just start infiltrating their company because that's the, the easiest way to do it because everybody's talking about you. Everybody knows about your book and you are consistent. And it's like... um. Being in a romantic relationship, right? <laughs> and you have a, a pesky guy who's coming along and just bothering, bothering, bothering. And eventually, you just break down. <laughs> in Delilah's world, but <laughs> but you know, the being consistent and following up and um, being in their in their space and being you know omnipresent throughout their company. 
is a great way for you to get that tier A, numero uno, traditional publisher you want to get. Well, now, what is, go ahead. Okay. Now, um, I mean, just to get in front of them, because everything we do nowadays has to be about relationship building. When you go and apply for a job, the best way to get the job with that company is to be the one that's going to be calling, be the one that's actually showing up there. Because nine times out of 10, if your name is just on a paper and you have a book and it's on the paper, you know, they're not really um, emotionally connected to it. You know what I mean? They don't know you. They don't like you. And they definitely don't know if they trust you. That's true. true. So that's my perspective on it. <laughs> and, and it's a great, a great one. I'm, I'm glad you gave that chance. Your, your perspective is an opening one. And I love that. that. From, From a, a publishing, publishing and writer's perspective, the key phrase there in Sue's question is proposal. Um, Stephen, are you, if you are really looking at a proposal, meaning that you have not yet written the book or you have not yet published it yourself, okay, then definitely follow what uh, the advice that Delilah's given you. But don't, but also consider that an agent may be your best option and shop around for an agent if you're going to do it, okay? Uh, shop around and find someone who knows the type of book you've written and also knows the publishers that you have already targeted. That piece of advice right there, targeting the publishers, is huge. Do that first. Do your research and identify the publishers that you consider to be the best for your book. Now, on the other hand, if the book is actually created, okay, then you're not really writing a proposal so much as you are building an audience for that book. More and more, and I, and I don't have the exact numbers, but I remember reading last week it was that I was reading it and I, I'm going to say, and I could be wrong about this, but I'm going to say over 60% of the new books that, that traditional publishers are bringing in are coming in from authors who have self-published and have built an audience. Okay. Mm -hmm. So publishers, traditional publishers, they are looking at what's out there and what's getting noticed. Okay. So if you have written the book, Go ahead, get it published, and build that audience, and I, then market it. I'm sorry. I would think that the reason why they're doing that is because they want to bring on people who are go-getters. So if you're out there and you're Facebook living every day, you're building your author platforms, you're getting on a 50 million podcast, you're prospecting them, you know, and you're putting all in all that effort for your book, those are the type of people they want to work with. Yes, plus there's a built-in audience, and that's huge. And yeah. That really is huge because the, that, that's half of their job done. Uh, yeah. What little job the, they do in marketing, but, <laughs> but that definitely is half their job done if there's an audience they can market to. A traditional publisher wants to bring on what's the next bis, big thing. They want number one sellers on the New York book list. They don't want to bring on people who will just – wrote a book and didn't have it edited or this, this, and that, you know what I mean? They want to bring on people who are concrete numbers. They're looking for consistent Ooh. sellers and big sellers. You're right. Consistency is the other, other point that you made. And that is to be consistent with every, whatever, whatever you choose to do, be consistent. with it. Um, yeah. Don't, don't send out a proposal to one publisher and wait for it to come back. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. I, I, I hate to hear how in different groups and stuff, I've read how um, some authors go, they, they send out their, you know, they write their book, they're all excited and everything, send it out to a publisher. Publisher doesn't get back to them until a year or two years later. And then it's a denial. It's like you just wasted all that time for nothing. Yeah. Move on to the next one. Keep working on this one and move on to the next one in the meantime. Yeah. Create a sales process. Um, you know, I would even go as far as creating a short campaign for how you're going to touch them. You know what I mean? Or sorry, not this is a sales terminology, you guys. <laughs> but how you're going to approach them and how many times you're gonna message them before you move on to the next. So that way, you know, you're not wasting your time and your time is optimized. Yeah, great question. Hopefully that's given you some not some answers, Stephen. I hope so. I like how you put it into a different perspective. Hello. The kids are home. <laughs> It is live television. <laughs> it scared me. <laughs> I told you there was going to bust at the door. Let me know. 
We had my cat at the beginning of the hour, and now we got the kids coming in at the half hour. <laughs> this is our lives, folks. <laughs> this is who we are. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hide his comment down here. Um, and then thanks, Stephen, for those awesome questions. Um, give me one moment here. I'm going to get the next question up here. Uh, good, good, good comment, Stephen. She's going to put up another next question, but I'm going to read Stephen's comment. He says he's looking for any publisher that will let him stay home and write. And I agree with you there. <laughs> the key there is just to keep writing and keep getting them out there. You need to have multiple books to make money. Right. Right. All right. So the next question is, why do authors need publicity? Okay. Why do authors need publicity? All right. <laughs> One I second. Said, right I well, I think Stephen said it earlier. She's and, and, and in one of his comments that didn't get on screen, he said, everybody loves it. They just haven't read it. And publicity is different from marketing. Okay. And, and uh, Delilah, when she comes back, can give us the true definition. But essentially, when you're talking about marketing, that is the process of getting your, your product in front of the audience and, and hopefully selling it. The idea is that they, they, you want them to buy. The call to action is to buy whatever the product is, in this case, a book. Publicity is information. Publicity is building awareness. Publicity is building the relationship. It is not necessarily a call to action to buy. It might be a call to action to simply learn more. Okay, so so there is a difference between publicity and marketing. A huge difference. <laughs> uh, given them my perspective, why don't you give them yours, Delilah? All right, for me, publicity is um, getting your hands into the media. Or, I mean, getting your yeah, getting your hands into the media, getting eyes on you from the media to expand awareness for your book, business, and products. So <laughs> my, my ideas on it is to, you know, because right now, like, you can go the TV route. You can go the radio route. You can go X, Y, and Z route. You know what I mean? But to me, TV and watching TV and radio and all that, that the views are coming down on that. So unless you're going to be on Oprah or um, somebody really big and famous, um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think that getting in front of those um, people are, are is a really big deal these days, because you can get more out of utilizing your online systems or your online social channels like Facebook, uh, YouTube, and all those. So I would say uh, you know because a lot of people waste a lot of time and getting getting into newspapers and, and getting into radios and stuff like that. But you got to think about how much reach that's really going to give you when you're doing it. So instead of focusing on those old ways, I mean, you want to do them. Don't get me wrong. If you can get on them, that's great. Get on, get on as many as you can. But I would say get on podcasts, get on anything that uh, with influencers. Influencers are definitely the way to go. Um, anybody with a big audience, um, you know, connecting with people of big profiles online, because that's going to be the best way to make book sales. So, Lila, do you think that an author has to have a public relations manager, someone to have to do that, or can the author do a lot of that themselves? Nowadays, um, it's best to get a public relations manager because then they can handle all of that for you. But it's not a necessity because with the way that this, the socially, you know, how we are building social relationships and, you know, it's a different, it's a different world. We're you also know, connected. Yeah. You got to be able to sell yourself these days. And even like being an author, you're going to have to market your book yourself. So you might as well learn how to, you know, uh, be your own PR person and reach out to media and do all this stuff yourself too. Because, um, People want to people want to book you, <laughs> but if you're going for something like super professional and it's higher niche and um, there's a lot of money to be made for like you're a big speaking professional, so on and so forth, and yeah, definitely go and get yourself a PR person because you're not going to have time. But you know, majority of this audience, I don't believe they're at that scale yet. So nine times out of ten, you're going to have to learn how to do a little bit of PR for yourself. 
And and again, the difference is essentially PR is awareness and marketing is, is generating sales. That's the real difference. One's generating awareness, one's generating sales. Right. It should make it really, really simple, which of course it isn't. <laughs> right. Nothing is simple these days. Everything is chaos. <laughs> 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 I've been watching Batman, y'all. Forgive me. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm thinking it's time to spin it to win it. What do you think? You guys want to spin it to win it? Who yeah, yeah. Woo! Let's do it. <laughs> All right, fine. We will spin it to win it. Okay. Got my drum roll going. <laughs> I'm my camera so I can get it in there. There we go. All right. So last week we had viewers share our live stream. And we had Leon Joseph, Angel Flores, Jim Vogel, Stephen Hollifield, and Peter Willer all shared our live stream from last week. So they are entered to win an Amazon gift card and a copy of one of Candy's books. So they have two chances on this will to win. Let's see who is it. I like this. <laughs> we love fortune. There's Vanna. <laughs> <laughs> and just my luck, it didn't land. It landed like right in the middle of two. Hold on. <laughs> Vanna. I like that. Vanna White. It did it again. Oh, my goodness. All right. Whoever's closest this time. Come on. Come on. Hey, you know what? Who's that heart? <laughs> Peter Peter Weller Peter, Peter Weller. Weller all right <laughs> Peter Weller you're our winner Yay. Right. Woo. <laughs> but you know what though what Stephen Hollifield he was the first one waiting for us today <laughs> I think loyalty should be um recognized True. too I do too so maybe we'll get him a copy of your book. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> awesome. So, Stephen, you're a winner today. <laughs> and Peter Weller, um, if you're watching this, I have got to put this up there. But Peter Weller, you go ahead and reach out to me on one of my social media channels, and I will hook you up with your gifts. I actually don't think so, uh, I'm not sure if he's watching today. I haven't looked, but uh, but I will uh, I will let him know. <laughs> Oh, that's one of your peeps. Yes, I know him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Congrats, Peter Willer. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay, and remember that um, uh, we're doing it again this week, right? Yes, we are. So make sure you guys share this live stream for a chance to win a $10 Amazon gift card and a copy of... What are your book names, Candy? Um, well, I have two books that I'm offering as possibility. You can either do Purpose to Authority, note the uh, author, I-T-Y, Authority, or the Daybook for Writers. So one of these two books, Daybook for Writers or Purpose to Authority. You can choose which one. Awesome. So make sure you guys share this live stream. And if you're just now jumping on, I see we have some new people. Make sure you hashtag replay. And go back and watch the. We had gave some really great advice about create, or Candy gave some great advice about create space, about publicity. Um, you know, Stephen had a few questions about publishing um, with KDP and um, book proposals or proposals for to publishers. So, you guys, make sure you rewatch this and catch up on that information. It's really important for you, and it help you guys go a long way. Now. If you guys have questions, I think we have time for one more. If anybody has one. Oh, you want to do one more? Well, maybe. Uh, well, maybe not. Oh, I, you're right. I just looked at the clock. You're right. We're done. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, Lorraine Moore says hello. Hello, Lorraine. Thank you hello. for joining us. But yeah, if you have questions, make sure to submit them. Let me see if I can get this to go big. Nope, that's me. That looks good. Though. Yeah, you can see it. Oh my goodness. It's like just moving us around. Make sure you submit your questions at smartmarketingforauthors.com and pick 
um, the Smart Author series on there. You'll be able to find both me and Candy. And, you know, if you need to schedule a consultation with either one of us, that is also on our landing page there on smartmarketingforauthors.com. And then, all as always, make sure you visit Candy at A to Z, write and publish now to get that good old book coaching in. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, and with that being said, um, oh, I just want to mention one more time that I have opened uh, for more author interviews. And me and Candy are looking for book experts for next week. So if you are an expert in publishing, or not publishing, just um, an expert in just the whole, everything, all, everything that has to do with writing publishing. Yeah, we want you. We're looking for you to be on our panel. So love to have a cover designer come on. Yeah, a graphic designer, um, cover designer, editor, um, all those other different people. So stay tuned for that and for now. Are you ready, Candy? I think so, yes. All right. All right, we will say au revoir. I'm going to leave up the main screen for a few seconds so that they can see it. And then I'll end the broadcast. So give me 20 seconds. All righty. While she's doing that, I'll say uh, I'll say goodbye for, for today. And uh, we'll be back next week. But again, tune in at noon on Thursdays, Eastern time. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.